In this lesson, we're going to examine the applications of price elasticity of demand, cross price elasticity of demand, and income elasticity of demand. We're not going to focus on PES, or price elasticity of supply, in this lesson, because in the price elasticity of supply lesson, I explained how PES is relevant for the producers of primary commodities versus manufactured goods. However, in my lessons on the demand elasticities, I did not talk much about how these different concepts apply to producers, to the government, and depending on the types of goods that are in question. So we'll go through each of the demand elasticities in this lesson and talk briefly about how each elasticity can apply to different stakeholders in an economy. Let's start with PED, or price elasticity of demand. So why should producers care about the responsiveness of consumers to price changes for their goods? A knowledge of PED allows producers to estimate the effect that a price change will have on revenues. In an earlier lesson, in a previous lesson, we learned about the total revenue test. We learned that if PED is less than one, in other words, if demand is inelastic, then an increase in price will lead to higher revenues. Of course, this information is very useful for businesses to know. On the other hand, they should know that if demand is elastic, then an increase in price will lead to a fall in revenues. Knowing how responsive their consumers will be to price changes allows businesses to make informed decisions about how they change the prices of their goods in any particular time. The total revenue test also helps businesses know when they should lower their prices as well. If demand is elastic, then a decrease in price could lead to an increase in total revenues. However, if demand for their goods is inelastic, then a price cut will cause a firm's revenues to fall. What about the government? Government might need to understand the elasticity of demand for different goods as well if government is considering implementing taxes or subsidies on the production of a good. So a knowledge of PED will help governments understand the effect of taxes on different goods. For example, a tax on a good for which demand is highly elastic will not create much tax revenue since the quantity demanded will fall considerably and therefore there won't be much tax revenue generated for the government. Taxing highly elastic goods is going to be very ineffective at raising government tax revenue. On the other hand, taxing goods for which demand is highly inelastic, such as cigarettes or gasoline for automobiles, will be more effective at raising government tax revenues. And will have little impact on the quantities demanded and therefore employment in the industries that are being taxed. A knowledge of PED is very important for government when determining how much and what kinds of goods they should place taxes on. The third consideration when talking about PED is how demand for different types of goods might be more or less elastic. We're distinguishing here between primary commodities and manufactured goods. Generally speaking, demand for primary commodities is going to be relatively inelastic compared to that for manufactured goods. The main reason that demand for primary commodities is relatively inelastic compared to manufactured goods comes down to the number of substitutes available. Most primary commodities have very few substitutes. For example, there's no substitute for oil. However, the things that oil and other primary commodities are used to manufacture can have several different substitutes. Therefore, demand for the manufactured goods tends to be more elastic due to the number of substitutes being greater than the demand for the primary commodities that are used to produce them. Let's move on to XCD. Cross price elasticity of demand matters to producers for a very important reason. A knowledge of the XCD for a particular firm's goods will allow that firm to estimate the impact of a change in the price of a related good on that firm's demand. Firms are able to estimate how a change in the price of a substitute or a complement will affect the sales for their good. Knowing the XED for their own goods relative to other goods will allow firms to adjust their output appropriately when the price of related goods changes. A knowledge of XED can also help government make informed decisions about placing taxes or subsidies on the production of different goods. Government will be able to estimate the impact that a tax on a particular good will have on the quantities demanded of other related goods. Government might want to know that if it places a new higher tax on gasoline, this might cause the demand for public transportation, something that government also is responsible for providing to increase. 
A knowledge of XED can help government make informed decisions about the impacts of its taxes and subsidies on particular goods on related goods. Now, XED does not really have many applications when it comes to primary commodities versus manufactured goods, so we're going to move on to income elasticity of demand here and talk about why producers might want to have a knowledge of the income elasticity of demand for their products. YED refers to how consumers of a particular goods demand will change when their incomes change. This allows businesses to make informed decisions about production because they will know the effect of a change in consumers incomes on sales. For example, during recessions when incomes are falling, producers of inferior goods will want to increase their output. However, when incomes are rising or an economy is in an expansion phase, producers of inferior goods will want to decrease their outputs in order to compensate for the decreased demand that will surely follow higher incomes. Of course, if there's a producer of a normal good, it will want to know how much demand will fall when there is a particular decrease in income or how much demand will rise when there's a particular increase in households' incomes. Knowing the income elasticities of demand for their products allows producers to respond to rising or falling incomes appropriately. Let's move over to the type of good column here and talk about how the income elasticity of demand for primary commodities might differ than that for manufactured goods and services. Generally speaking, as incomes rise, Demand for primary commodities increases more slowly than for manufactured goods and services. Why is this and why is this important to understand? As a country gets richer and its household's average incomes go up, they tend to increase their consumption of luxury goods and manufactured goods and services of all different types more rapidly than they increase their demand for primary commodities. Primary commodities are the raw materials that go into the manufacturing of manufactured goods. Service providers, such as salons and legal services and medical services, tend to see their demand grow more rapidly as incomes rise in a nation than the producers of primary commodities. A knowledge of this information will help producers of different goods and services respond appropriately as incomes are rising in developing countries in particular. In this lesson, we've looked at the applications of demand elasticities, PED, XED, and YED, for producers, for the government, and depending on the different types of goods being produced. A knowledge of elasticity allows producers and the government to make informed decisions about output, prices, and the use of taxes and subsidies. Here we go.